Today, we are talking about the factors that affect men as they get older, especially dangers of isolation. We don't wanna see that happen as we age. Also, we wanna be on guard against the comparison trap as we progress through the stages of our life. If you're new to the channel, my name is Andrew, and for the last almost 30 years, I've had the pleasure of helping people from all walks of life to do better with their mental health, their inner life to become sustainable. Thanks for being here on the channel today. Let's go to today's episode. For yourselves, what, what do you think and what do you feel when you look down the road at the prospect of aging and, and getting older and the reality that's in front of all of us getting beyond our prime? Mm. Who wants to go first on that one? <laughs> What does that prospect feel like? Yeah. There's a word that's been mentioned a few times tonight, uh, isolation. Right. I don't want to be alone. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and I think that I mean, our um, second daughter, she won't mind me saying, has battled for the last six years with like depression, anxiety. Right. And um, one of the natural things she does is isolates herself. Mm-hmm. So she'll go upstairs and read and be by herself. We encourage her, be with your sisters, be with the family as much as possible. So it's a natural thing. And I tried to make a shift a few years ago and my, where my son plays is sport. They have uh, the masters, so mm-hmm. the, they call themselves masters. Yes, what and age bracket is well, the 35 plus. <laughs> <laughs> 35 plus. <laughs> you were? <laughs> so you got any, there, you just really young plus. Plus. <laughs> Anything from 35 up to 75. Uh, wow. And they asked me to go along, and it's completely out of my comfort zone. I'm, mm. I'm very much, you know, like to be with who I know. And I went along, and I've never had so much fun before. Mm. Mm. So as I get older, um, I try to throw myself out there more right. with what I enjoy. Sure. And because I don't want to isolate myself. I don't mm. want to be alone. Mm. Not just, obviously, I, I want to be my wife. But sure. I under, understand I need these things in my life. Yes. To be with yes. mates, to be with brothers. Mm. And so when I think of myself down the track, mm. I want to make sure I keep doing those things. Yes. Um, I know it's a simple idea. Sure. But I think it goes a long way with my personal. Yes mental health, my well-being, right. who I am as a person, what I mm-hmm. get out of life. Because, yep. you know, you did mention the soul before too. And I remember having a conversation with you a few years ago mm. um, when I started doing track days. Right. You know, that's healthy for me. That's who I am. Absolutely. Mm. And it, it, not only is it enjoyable and we love it. Yes. I've met so many amazing people through yes. that. Shared passions. So I'm excited for what is ahead. Yes. Because of those things that I, I am doing. Right. And I want to do more of that yeah. as I get older. So yeah. it's about spending time with my wife, my family, my kids, but also those things that I take enjoyment out of mm. yeah, yeah, with yeah. people. Sure. Mm. You know, so. I hear a few things there, Mick, and I, I love the way you've framed that. And, and I, love, I love hearing the fact that you've actually consciously thought of this. Mm. What does my life look like as I get older? Uh, and that idea, it's a very powerful statement to make to yourself to be able to say, I don't want to be alone. Yeah. To say it out loud. Mm-hmm. You know, there's some people who probably that thought would never cross their radar. Others it would, mm. but they would not dare say it. But the fact that you've said it then parlays into, I'm going to do something about it. Yeah. Which is very, very powerful. And uh, I'm in a similar boat, I think. You know, I'm, I'm turning 50 next year, which if I'm being perfectly honest, um, unsettles me. I don't like it. Mm. Um, I accept it on a pragmatic level in, in the sense that it's happening, whether mm. I like it or not. Um, but internally, I don't like it. I'm uncomfortable with it. Um, I struggled that? turning 40. Mm. It took me a good three months yeah. to emotionally cope with how can I be 40? How, yeah. Who did this to me? Mm. Uh, you know, <laughs> And then I'm about to cross into 50 and I know mm. that there's <clears throat> probably going to be a little bit of struggle in accepting that. But my lens looking forward is very similar. It's this notion of I need to make sure that I stay plugged into mm. um, recreation that does my soul good. Yep. And I need to make sure that I keep on being intentional mm. about the people around me in Definitely. those activities. Mm. Um, I, I recorded a, an episode recently to do with helping men with mental health. And one of the things I said was, 
um, men, especially as they progress through middle age, they have to have activity and connection outside of the home, yep. outside of marriage or partnership, mm. outside of parenting. Yep. All those things are hyper valid and important. We get that. But if you're not establishing connection and recreation outside of those zones, you're probably in a vulnerable state, I Definitely. think. And so the way you frame that up is very, very powerful, I think. What, what about you guys? I'm going to come to the young, young pup last. Uh, <laughs> when you look forward down that road, like what, what do you think about the prospect of the future and getting older, Dave? Yeah. <clears throat> um, I, I guess I just, as I get older, I just want to know that my life has made a difference. Right. In other people's worlds. That's right. kind of my thing. That's, <clears throat> I, um, yeah, I, I guess I want, to, I want to grow older knowing that I'm not, it's not just all about me. Right. And uh, that I'm actually helping other people. And, yes. And making that, you know, the friend thing is a big thing. Um, I know for myself, and I guess, you know, obviously being a pastor, you're with people all the time mm. and not everyone <clears throat> is a close friend. Mm. And sometimes it's hard to work out who friends are and who right. they are and over the years. Um, so, you know, wanting to move forward in life knowing that, hey, I'm being intentional in that space. Because mm. um, it'd be easy to, to step away from it. Yeah. And I'm a bit of a recluse and okay. introverted to start with. So that lone time I love, I do love that. Right. <laughs> um, but like thinking, you know, needing to push myself out of that space. Okay. Actually just listening now going, yeah. you know, I probably need to grow right. in that space. Yeah, right. Um, you know, and you know, to be perfectly honest, it's probably one of the major places at the moment I'm looking at going, yeah, that, that's words that I've been trying to get okay. about my own life. Right, right. Because um, it ebbs and flows, you know. Yes. Sometimes I'm really good with that stuff and I'm out and I'm about and then sometimes I'm not. So, yes. Mm. So I just find, because I, don't know, I guess working in a people industry, you, you can get peopled out. Absolutely. <laughs> quite easily Absolutely. and then you can find all the excuses in the world to yes. not connect yeah. Um, yeah. and they can be valid but yeah. the reality is I don't want to get to 60 yes. and be lonely like yeah. you said yeah. like, I don't you, want to be there were you aware of that in fullness before you heard Mick describe it the way he did or has that helped switch a light on even further? I think it's helped put a bit of a light on. Yeah, I think okay. I was aware of like I've been thinking a lot around this space recently. Right. Um, just around, you know, developing deep friendships in my world, people who mm. I'm going to go to distance with and, yep. you know, and, and I guess doing a bit of a litmus test on my life going, well, where am I at right now? Mm. Um, but I probably hadn't got as deep as thinking of the loneliness side of things, yeah, you know, actually okay. there's something really valid there. Yes. Um, and I think there's probably a lot of guys that feel that 100%. way mm, mm, um, mm. and are lonely even though they're in a crowded space yes. and they've got lots of mates around. Mm. But yes. the, Which the is relationships... one of the most painful things mm. to experience, right? Yeah. To be lonely in a crowd. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. Darn yeah. It. Not nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, interesting. Interesting to hear you say that another guy's story mm. wraps some language around what was actually already processing in you yeah but hadn't really reached full clarity just yet mm. but maybe even after the conversation tonight it continues to grow in that direction yeah which yeah. would be powerful mm. doug how do you feel about getting older oh, and- <laughs> enjoying the conversation uh, yeah very much agree with mm. with the connectedness yes i think yeah the, the whole getting older thing because i've my horizon has retirement somewhere in you know you know, getting closer and closer and and I guess a little bit of a shock for me of I'm not that old am I <laughs> right so and and then there's this there's this mounting pressure of trying to work out um, how much is enough you know like mm. how long do I work for right and and being fascinated by um, you know just all the conversations that are around me at the moment of you know, the cost of living, like the media is just constantly on the mm-hmm. cost of living and how dreadfully mm. hard it is to live and and it is, you know, mm-hmm. the, the pressure is on people. I'm at the other end of, you know, you know, have I have I done enough mm. to then stop and, and then live life the way right. I want to live it. And really coming to the to the conclusion like does it matter? Um, you will land wherever you're gonna land. Yeah. Mm. Right. Um, does does that Unsettle you that thought, or are you at home with that? No, well, I think I think both, and also moving towards the the liberation of 
when I think through, when I think through, you know, there's the fundamentals, you know, you've got to live in a house and you've got to mm. eat food and, and, and when, once they're catered for, whether you've got a mansion or a, or a shack is, is really irrelevant. Mm. Mm. I'm moving towards a, a, a place of um, the, like rather than consuming my time with, with the, the getting and the having enough and, yes. the, and the worrying about it, actually just letting go, and, letting go of that and actually stepping into the present, where's the joy? Yeah. Where's where's the curiosity? Right. Where's the the relationship and the connectedness? Mm. Mm. And I guess you know, looking around because because I see it all around me. There's guys who are have it all and retired and lonely mm. and mm. and miserable. Right. And there's guys who've got the seat hanging out of their pants yeah. who seem to be having a great life, <laughs> you know, and and have mates and and they're connected yeah. and and right. so so it's for me it's this sifting through of of. What is actually the issue here? Because mm. because I, I don't think the issue is the is the the having enough. Yeah. Mm. I think I think the issue is is I guess almost like like getting back to the present thing of like what am I doing now mm. that elicits joy and right. connectedness and right. relationship? Right. Where's the getting back to the ugly conversations? Like, am I courageous enough, or am I game enough to step into the ugly conversation mm-hmm. that hasn't been talked about, so it gets resolved, yeah. and we can move into a place where there is joy? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can I add something to that? Yeah, please. Because you mentioned um, earlier about the inner twelve-year-old, mm-hmm. and I'll never forget <laughs> we the the home we sold a few years ago, mm-hmm. beautiful home in um, Harrington Grove, the beautiful big home. Busted my backside off the, you know, <laughs> w- working 70 hour weeks and, you know, big, beautiful home is going to be our forever home. And I remember when we moved in and we were living there for a few months and I asked my boy at the time, it was what, 2016, so yeah, he wouldn't have been that old. Um, would have been about seven, maybe, maybe younger, six. And I said to the kids, say, surely this is your favourite house, yeah? <laughs> and they go, no, we like the other house better. <laughs> yeah. And... Right. It's a simple <laughs> thought from a child. They like the other house better because that's where they had memories. Yeah, yeah. right. And yeah, it, fun. Yeah. You know, mm. and I think that perspective on life as well is a great help for all of us. Yes. To remember that um, it, it sh- should bring some clarity to what is enough. Yes. Mm. And it's about what you take um, pleasure out of. Yes. And at, more than anything, taking pleasure out of those memories with your family, your yes. wife, your mm. friends, those moments you have. Um, because otherwise we can get caught up just totally. chasing, chasing, yeah, chasing, yeah, chasing, totally. chasing. Mm. Yes, which um, compounds everything, right? Yeah, I, I, part of me wanted to, you know, say, what's wrong with your son? <laughs> yeah. like, are you yeah. serious? Yeah. Like, we've got a theatre room in this yeah. house. Yeah. Yeah. The other house can fit in, the whole block can fit in this house. <laughs> you know, so having that inner 12 year old, like you said earlier, mm. I think can help with that uh, yes. as we get older mm. as well. Yeah. So mm. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and, and the letting go of. The social expectation of yeah, definitely the big car and the big A lot house. of people yeah. would be helping that. <clears throat> I'm, yeah, I'm currently in that kind of trap at the moment because just I think at my age now, and and it's so funny. I have and probably you guys can t- t- um, testament to this, but a lot of guys my age at the moment, a lot of my best friends have um, like got the house and the car and all that, and and one of my close mates just you know bought another house and in, in um, near the golf club and all that, and it's just, it's all great and we're happy for them. But sometimes you get caught like, why aren't I at that stage? Mm. What did I do wrong? Comparison. You know, and, yeah. and that's and that's yeah. such a like it gets ugly, really mm. ugly. And mm. and Definitely. these like like and two of them are like my groomsmen at my wedding. Mm. And and for that mindset, for like, hang on, but you don't think like that. Why are you getting like that? And it's just you rewind it a bit and think, oh, I should have done this better. I should have done this better. I should have done this better. Right, I'm not gonna mm. do that. Mm. Later, so I've got to work hard now, or I've got to do this, and the distraction can yep. can make you lose uh, focus right. on what the main point Definitely. is here, right? right? Mm. Relationships, as you know, like one of the most social people you know out there. Last two years, I've not wanted to hang out with anyone like ever because I just want to focus on doing what I need to do to get to that next stage, the next milestone. Mm. Right, and um, it's it's yeah, for me, it's, it's been such as like a. For me personally, it's been like more of a dark place. And then when I've actually been coincidentally hanging out with my friends, 
Like, and once they're gone, like, that was really good. I need to do that more often. Mm. Yes. And I'm yeah. like, why? What am I? Like, Which is an interesting mm. thought for you. And as you say, I, I do know you well. You, you are, I, you know, I call Doug hyper aware. You are hyper social. <laughs> uh, you love being around people, yeah. um, et cetera. And so to, to be in that space where for a couple of years you haven't been doing that for various reasons yeah. and you've got young children so you know yeah. there's there's a there's yeah. a change of season that's right but perhaps it gets into the zone of not being true to who you actually are yeah and maybe adopting some other stuff and i, I want to pick up on that for all of us yeah. the comparison trap yeah that's mm-hmm. for for it's all men killer. Yeah. 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 i mean i think it's a no-brainer that it's a big deal yeah. right but yeah. maybe talk to us about your own experience how, how does it play out in your headspace yeah. in your observations around you mm. Uh, how have you wrestled with it? How are you resolving it? Yeah. Talk to me. I'll, I'll go first. Um, it was a <laughs> really bad for me. Right. Um, so I mentioned earlier, we got married. We already had the two um, amazing daughters. And where we were in life at that point, financially, was nowhere near where our family members um, and extended family were at. Okay. And so for me as a man... And, you know, this is um, open knowledge of even, uh, you know, spoken to a lot of friends and family about it. It's, it's our story. For, for me, it was a big trap right. because I wanted to do all the things that they were doing, mm-hmm. all the things I wanted to do. And then I also had to provide for my wife and mm. give her the things that she needed. Right. And it got to a point where um, this was probably uh, 10, 12 years ago, maybe a little bit longer. And it got to a point where she goes, oh, we need to do this. And I said, we can't afford that. And she goes, why? And I said, we just can't afford it. And well, we need to do this, this and that. And a lot of it was, you know, dentist appointments mm. and this and that. And we just Almost couldn't stuff. afford it. Yeah. And she goes, I want to see everything. And we had a lot of bad debt. And that was all because of me mm. from the comparison, comparing mm. to wow. everyone and mm. forgetting, wait a minute, this is where we are at the moment. Mm. And when I started to compare and thinking I need to be there, Really, I'm like, there's no way. It was impossible for me to be there at that point in life. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I, when we laid did, it all out. Did you out, know it at the time? Oh, uh, probably I mean, you deep can down. Looking yes back, no. obviously. No, deep down, yes. Right, okay. But in denial about it. Okay. Because oh, I can get another credit card, I can get this, I can get that, I can do that. And, you know, eventually yes. it became this mountain. What of, drove the denial? Uh, a bit of shame. Right. Why can't I? Right. You know, a bit like what you said too. Why aren't I there yet? Right. What have I done wrong? Mm-hmm. I work hard. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm here because I didn't study. <laughs> you know, I, you know, I made choices for myself, and this is where I'm at. This is what my job pays yes. at the moment, and so I didn't want to tell my wife she couldn't because they are. Mm. So it meant I had to live a life at that time that was a lot more limited. And so when we did lay it out, we sorted out our budget and we paid off things and we put goals in place and life's mm. a lot different now. Right. But then the comparison thing, and I, it's a learning that I've taken that I to a lot of close friends and family now. Yes. I said, don't ever look at us because they mm. see us and I've got cars and house and, and stuff. We've worked very hard for it. Right. Um, don't look at that mm. and think, why aren't you there? Mm. Put your own goals in place for your life, for you, whether you're single, married, whatever yep. it is. And live your life according to where you're at. Yes. It's because looking over the fence and looking at someone that could be even close to you, it's a big, big trap. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, and it's, it's really, you're, you're heading down a path of great challenges, yeah, yeah. I believe. Yep. And it's a trap that can cause a lot of destruction yeah. in your world. Men struggle with it, don't they? Because, Definitely. Because you, I think there's environmental pressure, and we've talked yep. about that. There's societal pressure, and, you know, we've touched on those. Well. But I think there's also, there's a normal pressure that's actually innate to our wiring as men. Yeah. We, we are wired to achieve. Mm. We're wired to conquer. We're <laughs> wired to take on challenge. It's, mm. it's what defines our manhood, really. Definitely. But then that can get us into trouble when it mm. sort of merges with the comparison trap, right? Yeah. Dave, what do you think? Yeah. Well, I guess for me, like, I don't... My, the, the area of comparison around what others have got and what I don't have doesn't seem to be a bigger deal for me. Okay. Um, I, I think I compare myself more to like just people in general, oh, they're a better person than me or yes. am I good enough or, um, okay. or you know, like, yeah, I guess that's where I kind of fall into that space a little bit more. Yeah, okay. Materialis- materialistically. Or internal I, stuff. Yeah, just mm. the internal stuff, you know. Yep. Am, mm. I, am I a good person like that person? Right. And uh, 
you know, would I be somebody that someone would want to be friends with or, you right. know, that kind of, those sort yes. of self-doubt questioning yes. mm. things. That's probably for me, that's where yeah. it lives. So Yeah, fair enough. Mm. And look, for, for guys who are watching and listening to this right now, I think we'd have a mixture of us, you know, guys who are like that, where the external stuff sort of catches their eye yeah. more and drives them into more of your sort of story, Mick, versus what you're saying. Mm. There's still the constancy, isn't there, of yeah. the comparison mm. thing and how debilitating it is. Yeah. Um, you're at the young end, like we talked about. Yeah. I was going to call you young Jedi before, <laughs> but then I would have had to do an Anakin Skywalker yeah. joke. Oops, <laughs> too late, just did it. Um, <laughs> you are at the younger end, you're in your early 30s. Yeah. Is this a factor for guys your age now, do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, it's always, and I'll, I'll play this down, I guess, like to the year, uh, 12 year old analogy, but like who's got the bigger toy? Who's got the brightest, you know, loudest <laughs> toy kind of mm. thing? You know what I mean? And and you feel some form of accomplishment for like what, like five, 10 seconds, and then it's like, where's my next goal? Right. You know, right. where's that other toy? Yes. And um, it, it, it's so it's, for me growing up, I grew up like, even now, very materialistic, um, all my cousins and, you know, my uncles and all that is like, it was a sign of success, mm. right? So for me, it was like, I need to have X, Y, Z in order to be successful. Yes. So, is that a cultural thing? Co yeah, yeah, massively mm. cultural thing. I think as well because, and, and um, highlighting on that is because um, all my family f came from Iran, like, you know, dad came when he was, oh, like, in his mid-20s, mm -hmm. right, without my mum and my sister. My mum and my sister had to migrate to Germany for two years um, wow. to get away from the Iran-Iraq civil war. Wow. Yeah, so for them it's like he worked, he's constantly worked, and that's all he knows. Mm. So, and for me growing up, it's like if you stand still for a split second, you're lazy. Mm. So for that, it's mm. like <laughs> that's, mm. um, that's hard for me. And that kind of highlights the thing about right now working on my house. It's like, you know, if I stop for a split second and just – enjoy the house mm, like mm, mm, you know mm. god forbid i do that yeah. because i look lazy right. so and that's an intrinsic thing for me yeah so okay. again so but highlight more on the comparative type of thing it's just yeah i need to make sure i set this up so i can continue on my next goal yes and you rush 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 and then you're like you're 60 and you're like cool i can enjoy it all now and then my kids yeah, are the married and done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> right and just like right. it's over nothing <laughs> right, right. so for me it gets <laughs> it's scary really scary because mm. i don't know what the future holds for me i don't right. know what kind of father i will be in like now compared to another five years um and you know even now when our kids are like around the same age as all of our friends even like when their, their kids are sitting down drawing or whatever and my kids are at the back of a building running around chasing each other i'm like why can't you be like them and sit down and <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Like, yeah. and um kind of thing and it, it does happen it, it it's always kind of always sneaks into my head yes always does and it's and it's difficult like yes. do you talk about it like is it is it embarrassing to talk about it like or is it normal right. like hey we're all competitive as men it's in our nature kind of thing and and it's yeah. a thing but honing that in and you know it's 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 it can be healthy but you've got to make sure it doesn't like drive yes. you into the other, another direction mm. i think it's probably not normal to talk about it but it should be yeah. mm. and it needs to be mm. otherwise guys just live in their their learned behaviors yeah and, and really i think when it comes to the comparison trap that's one of the opportunities that is there for guys is that they they can accept that playing that game mm. is a learned behavior mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um you know I, I grew up as a kid in the 80s Mm. And, you know, everyone's biased about their own generation, right? But I, 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 feel, I feel blessed to have been a, a kid in the 80s because I feel like Gen X is my age group. I feel like we had the last real childhood before the world got silly with the internet and social media. And mm. We were inoculated against that stuff because we were mm. playing sport and riding bikes. That's what we knew. And so yeah. I don't think we had access to what these young guys have now with seeing the entire world in a split second, yeah, yeah. their hands. They know what everybody's got and what That's everyone's right. doing and mm. what they've achieved. And it, it, I think it's a lot of pressure on younger men these days. They're possibly facing an even more uphill battle in that regard. Mm. I, want I hope that conversation that you listened to today was beneficial to you. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, why don't you go ahead and do that? Also, I wanna ask you this question. What has the comparison trap been like for you as a man? Is it an issue? Is it a challenge? Has it changed as you've gotten older? Why don't you drop that in the comments below and give me your insights. I wanna hear your perspective on that issue. Make sure you hang around for the next episode where we're gonna be talking about more important stuff. We're talking about what men hope for. What do they dream about? 
Also, what are men's fears? What are they worried about? What are they concerned about with the trappings of society? And then finally, we're also going to talk about the super importance of having a purpose in life and knowing your unique why, the thing that gets you out of bed and keeps you going. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.